Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about the incisor teeth. So incisors have three major functions. The first is to incise or cut into material. The second is for aesthetics. And the third is for phonetics or pronunciation. So let's start with the uh, topography of the central incisor. Uh, here we have the right maxillary central incisor. Uh, and here's a facial view. So a couple things to think about. This is the, the widest tooth mesiodistally in the entire uh, dentition. It's a relatively flat tooth. It's described as being trapezoidal from the facial view. Um, its proximal contacts on the mesial side are in the incisal third, and in the distal, on the distal side, is at the junction of the incisal and middle thirds. Um, we have two developmental depressions that separate the three facial lobes, the middle lobe being the most prominent, most convex. Uh, the distal side sees a little bit more convexity at the crown and the root. Sometimes there are these imbrication lines in the cervical third here. And the root classically points in the distal direction. Also to note, the, this mesioincisal angle is close to 90 degrees, while the mesiodistal angle is a bit more rounded. OK, great. Let's move on to the lingual view. The lingual uh, aspect has a pretty large cingulum here in the, um, the cervical third formed from the, the lingual lobe of development. Um, and then we have two marginal ridges of either side, creating a central lingual fossa. And then, as in many of the teeth, we see a taper of the tooth, especially in the root, uh, towards the lingual side so the teeth can bend and fit into the dental arch. And here we have a mesial view. So we're looking as if we were um, standing at the midline. Um, let's start with the height of contour. So we have the facial height of contour here in the cervical third and the lingual height of contour also in the cervical third, and this is a pattern for all anterior teeth. Um, this, this height of contour comes out less than or equal to half a millimeter from the CEJ, and that is an arch trait for all maxillary teeth. Uh, here we have um, a little bit of a root flute or developmental depression on the mesial side. Um, we have, let's see, an inclination of this incisal edge towards the lingual. And that's because all occlusal wear on maxillary teeth will be on the lingual side because these teeth overhang the mandibular teeth. Uh, one interesting thing to note about this this tooth is that if you were to draw a line, a root bisector from the proximal or side view, you'd see that it intersects four things conveniently. The root tip, the deepest part of this a cervical line or CEJ, the mesial contact area, and the incisal edge. Um, also, from the mesial view, you can sort of see the distal marginal ridge peeking out because this tooth is twisting ever so slightly towards the distal. And you can imagine that this tooth is going to be part of a dental arch expanding out in this direction. All right, and then the distal side is just a mirror image of this one. We have a bunch of the same 
uh, features, except you'll note the, the biggest difference is that this cervical line is more shallow. It deviates less on the distal. That's how I think about it. It curves more on the mesial and deviates less on the distal. And that's a, a universal trait among uh, most all teeth. And then here we have the incisal view from the top. You, you may be able to make out the developmental depressions. Um, the height of contours are right here. Maybe able to see a little bit of those marginal ridges. Um, of course, here's the, the mesial side and here's the distal side. And the cingulum may ever so slightly favor the distal side. If we were to draw a quick line here, ever so slightly favoring the distal side. And then important to note is that this, if we were to take a cross section of this tooth um, halfway through the root, it would be a triangle because we have this lingual taper and the relatively flat facial side. All right, so let's move to the maxillary lateral teeth. Uh, here we have um, number seven, the right maxillary lateral. And it's quite similar to its, its neighbor. Uh, it has the two developmental depressions again. Uh, this time it's a little bit more curved. We see a little bit more curvature on the crown and the root. Um, the root also classically points distal. That's the same. The uh, proximal contacts here start. Remember, this was at the, the distal here was between the incisal and middle thirds. So here it's between the incisal and middle thirds. Moves down to uh, the middle third. Uh, this, this disto incisal angle here is very curved. That's, that's a unique feature of the facial aspect of this maxillary lateral. Um, the lingual, you see the outline is a complete mirror image, so from the lingual side we see similar marginal ridges, very prominent in the maxillary lateral, and then they come off sometimes to a point um, that results that could result in a lingual pit anomaly where cavities can develop quite easily. Um, moving to the mesial view, again if we were to draw a proximal root bisector you'd see that we have four things lining up. The root tip, the lowest part of that cervical line, the mesial contact area, and the incisal edge. And again, you can see the distal marginal ridge ever so slightly peeking out from the mesial view. Um, the distal view could have a developmental depression on the root, and there's a contact area, not too much going on here. Let's move on to the incisal view, the height of contours, right along the incisal ridge. Um, the facial, whoops, the facial view dominates most of this profile because it's very, very convex as we talked about in the facial from the facial aspect. And again, if we were to draw a line bisecting it, we would see that the cingulum oftentimes ends up distally. And you can start to see that this tooth is ever so slightly twisting towards the distal end to fit um, into, that, into that maxillary dental arch. Great, so let's move on to the mandibular incisors. Here's the mandibular central incisor. Um, incredibly symmetric. Um, ha has a lot of bilateral symmetry. Uh, the root tip can point distally, but um, that's classic and not always the case. Uh, the most important thing about this tooth is that it has, it, it shares a mandibular um, anterior trait, which is that the incisal edge always falls to the lingual. The incisal edge always falls to the lingual on mandibular anterior teeth. And we saw that in the case of the maxillary incisor teeth, 
that the incisal edge is right on that line, uh, that root bisector from the proximal view. And here it's um, lingual to that line. Um, the distal view is, again, a mirror image. And we sometimes see a deeper root flute from the distal view than on the mesial view, similar to the lateral incisor. And then here we have um, the incisal view. Again, you can see how symmetric this tooth is. And um, just to point out the cross section from halfway through the root, um, that's a little too, too extreme. But it's described as a ribbon shape with the distal side having uh, a concavity there. That's probably a little too extreme, but you get the idea. And then the root canal would be somewhere there. And I should just mention briefly that this maxillary lateral incisor is typically an egg-shaped or oval um, root cross-section. And the mandibular central incisor is ribbon-shaped. All right, great. And let's move to the mandibular lateral incisor. Here we have the right mandibular lateral incisor. I tried to st keep with um, all right side teeth. Um, this tooth is similar to the central incisor, the mandibular central incisor, except that it's wider mesiodistally. The crown is about the same length, but the root is a little bit longer. So overall, it's a, it's a bigger tooth than the central. The, and again, this is important to emphasize that a line bisecting the root, the incisal edge is going to fall lingual. And you, again, you can sort of see that distal marginal ridge peeking out as the tooth twist into its dental arch. And the twist on the mandibular anterior teeth is typically more than the maxillary counterparts because the, mandib the mandibular arch is tighter. The teeth have to turn a little bit quicker to fit. Now from the distal view you can see um, a pretty deep developmental depression on the root. Then we, if we move to the incisal view um, you see that distal twist here, and you can see that the cingulum, oh, whoops, the dist distal uh, twist here, I'm sorry, and then the cingulum, which um, is on the distal, favors the distal side. And the cross section is going to be very similar to the, to the central mandibular incisor. Okay, great. So that's a lot of the main features. So... I'm going to ask you to pause the video and for practice try drawing on a scratch paper um, the mesial view of tooth number eight. Good luck. Okay, hopefully you had uh, some luck drawing that tooth. Um, so if you're ready to review, let's see how you did. So the mesial view of number eight is going to be this view right here. So hopefully the components that you got um, included the height of contours in the cervical third, not too extreme, only about half a millimeter away from the CEJ. Um, the CEJ should have been pretty deep and pointed towards the crown, angle towards the crown. This crown form should have came, so it should have curved back in a convex manner so that the, the incisal edge would be on this root bisector. Um, maybe you, you could have drawn the distal marginal ridge peeking out a little bit. That would have been an awesome bonus. Um, a pretty big cingulum and then the root curving back to a point on the root tip, which also falls on this line. 
And you can always draw a line down the middle to make sure that all those four components are landing on that line. And that would be a good check to make sure that your drawing is complete. And one other thing to just double check your drawing, the crown um, and the root should be in proportion so that the root is about 1.5 times the length of the crown. And then you'll have a great drawing. All right, I hope this video is helpful, and I'll see you all next time.